everybody, it's Queen of Light 1111. Hope you guys are doing well. I have your energy check-in for today. And, um, you know, it's interesting. There's a lot of different cards, and I haven't even started channeling, so I'm really not even sure what kind of executive summary to even give this right now. So let's go ahead and get started. If you want to book your own personal reading, coaching session, or healing session, go to queenalight1111.com. And remember, I have uh, on my website not only my self-created decks, but the... Um, energy removal, the negative energy removal mantra that's there that tons of people have been um, getting and just telling me how much it has helped them. And um, I also have that coupled with the um, twin flame guided meditation and healing. So you definitely, if you're going to get those, you're going to want to do um, both of them. You're going to want to do the uh, negative energy removal first and then the healing and meditation. And I will tell you, so many people have felt a shift in themselves, in their connection, and you can do it as often as you like. The website allows for a maximum download of three times. So once you download it, make sure it's on your device. And if it's not there, do it from somewhere else because you're not going to be emailing out the, the downloaded file. So make sure that once you download it, that it is there before you go in and multiply continue to click that button on my website, okay? Because uh, once it's downloaded, it doesn't just go into outer space. It downloads locally into your device. And that goes for both the negative um, energy removal mantra as well as the guided healing meditation. So get those if you need help. And I will tell you, for those who have been using it, it has been uh, a major shift for them personally and within their connection. Bottom of the deck energy for Divine Feminine's overall energy shows me, look at this, the wheel with the star card. These are two cards of destiny. These are two cards of being aligned with spirit, aligned with your, with your destiny and your soul's growth. So what she is doing is she's in this energy, in her overall energy, just in general. She is very much in alignment. She's very much in the energy of healing and hope and renewal and she's doing a lot of work to align herself with her destiny okay so now let's go ahead and take a look at what the bottom of you know that's the bottom of the deck what the energy is for divine feminine first card out is hanged man hanged man is clarified by the seven of wands so this is really telling me that she's in a position of just pause and really looking at the areas where she has walls up, where she needs to keep some boundaries that are very healthy, and where maybe she may be overprotecting herself in certain areas. So she is in this energy of the hanged man, where she, you know, she, again, as she's getting into alignment, as she's moving towards her destiny, she's really looking at things from a different perspective, or even a new perspective, that where she may have been guarding her own happiness, um, you know, like overly protecting it or maybe guarding her heart too much for fear that, you know, she might get hurt or might feel too vulnerable. This energy of the crossroads, two of wands, there's an energy of the crossroads that she's really starting to move out of slowly but surely. And she is really in the energy of the high priestess, using her intuition and manifesting from that place. And she's really loving herself. She's loving herself through her hermit's journey, through her soul search, and she's really getting in alignment. Divine Masculine's bottom of the deck energy is nine of swords with the page of wands so there is some energy where there that maybe there's been communication maybe there's you know some sort of idea or news that is really in an energy that is stressing him out he's stressed out about some news he's stressed out about something that's happening or that he wants to maybe communicate or create in his life so what is this about four of wands i really feel like Four of Wands coupled with the Nine of Swords is the clarifier. I do feel like this is his stability. The stability is either financial, physical, mental. There is some sort of stability that he does not have at this time that is affecting him, that is affecting his union. So he's not feeling completely stable. So he's in this energy of wanting stability, creating stability, wanting to build stability, but it's stressing him out. 
okay? Temperance, so he's trying to heal. What's he trying to heal for? The Ten of Cups, he really wants to be happy. He wants to have his emotional bliss. He wants his happily ever after. And he wants to get into the power of the King of Wands so that he can start fresh, have this new beginning, have this passionate new beginning towards this spiritual connection. So I do feel like masculine stress has a lot to do with you know, maybe the things that he wants to create in his life that will support his union with Divine Feminine. So now let's go ahead and take a look at Divine Masculine and Feminine's crowning energy towards each other, okay? So what is going on as related to each other? Those are the energies that are just in their general energy. So bottom of the deck, we have the card Self-Respect. This is really about honoring the self. You have Ace of Cups for Masculine. You have Feminine who's in her High Priestess Hanged Man state, really looking at what she wants to create, what she wants to manifest. And so now here we have the Self-Respect card, Clarified by Justice, Clarified by Marriage. So you cannot get into an energy of marriage or union unless you're respecting yourself, balancing yourself out, doing right by yourself first in order to then do right by others. So this is a energy that divine masculine and feminine are both carrying at this time around respecting themselves so that they can respect each other. This is really about not breaching your own integrity and compromising your own self-respect. This is really the energy of, you know, spiritual growth, facing the challenging situations, okay, and really doing it from this place of integrity, not shortcutting, okay? So this card is coming out because we're looking at ways that we've compromised ourselves in the past. We've compromised ourself, our self-worth, our connection. And so this is really this introspection about how now to respect ourselves, respect our partner, and respect our connection so that we can bring balance and have this union, all right? The next card that we have here, look at this. I love this card. This is like my favorite card in this deck. Look at this. This is just about patience. This is about knowing. This is the divine feminine energy. Knowing that everything is going to be okay. Being in this energy of... I always forget what the heck this card is called. So let me tell you what this card is called. It's about patience, waiting for the right moment, okay? This is this, this feminine who knows that something has been pending for a very long time. But she knows... Despite her desire for results, despite that she would like this to happen sooner rather than later, she knows that good things can't be rushed. So she's restraining herself. She's sitting. She's taking it easy. She's not indulging. She's not overly connecting. She's just in this energy of patience because she knows this balance will come and her union will come. And from that's from that feminine's perspective, from masculine's perspective, he knows that his feminine has been very patient with him coming into balance for union, okay? So I really, really love these cards. So now let's get into the crowning energy specifically for them as related to each other. That was the bottom of the deck, okay? So let me put these cards away. And again, if you want to book your own personal reading, coaching session, or healing session, or if you want to purchase any of my decks or those mantras and the healing meditation that I talked about, Go to my website, queenoflight1111.com, and the link is in the description box. Divine feminine energy, crowning energy towards your masculine. Look at this. Luminosity, clarified by the four of cups and the main male. Luminosity, probably one of my favorite deck, uh, cards in this deck. This is about someone who is just glowing. Someone who glows within to attract the chivalrous male. Chivalrous male is the divine masculine energy, okay? This is someone who respects herself, respects her time, respects her feelings, and then also respects other people and their type, their time and their feelings. This is that energy that we just got at the bottom of the deck. So this is an energy where she is so lustrous, so luminous that she shines, her beauty, her um, purity shines from within her and it exudes out of her. And so this is an energy where she's very much balanced out her feminine side. She's in this energy where she's let go of old patterns of like being in control, micromanaging things, insisting. She's graceful. 
She's luminous. She's attracting. And she knows that things will come forward when they are supposed to. So luminous clarified by the four of cups and the main male, this is the energy where she understands that they've been in this cycle of this round and round, the cup's been there, the, man, the, the masculine's been seeing this cup. But I feel like this is the energy where she's let go of the need to force feed the cup to anybody. She's like, you know what? If you want me, if you don't want me, I want me. I choose me. I respect myself enough. I have my own light. And for the masculine, what she's basically saying in this energy, in her crowning energy is, you've seen the cup. You know what's there. You know I am this luminous divine feminine. And so if you can't see that, if you can't see my light, it's unfortunate, okay? But he sees it. He sees it. Her next crowning energy for Divine Masculine, because remember, this luminosity is the bottom of the deck is self-respect. For the Four of Cups, the bottom of the deck is justice. She's bringing herself into balance with this luminous energy where she's not trying to force feed the cup to Masculine. Take my cup, take my cup, okay? And this, and like, if you want to marry me, if you want to come into union, you're going to see when I respect myself, when I'm, when I'm in my own self-worth, you're already going to see it. And he does. So her second crowning energy is this card of relationships, interactions with others. You know, this card has come up for the collective before. This is about this mechanical instrument here with all these different pictures. And it's really about all the people that she's had in her life, right? Family, friends, partners, masculine. And this is really about her memories and her interaction with her masculine. This is really about the energy of what type of, of role did masculine play? What kind of role would she like the masculine to play in her life in the future? It's clarified by the Knight of Cups in community. So I really do feel like she wants to move forward in love with masculine, obviously. She wants to move forward with with love, but I do feel like there's also this energy because it's this community card where she knows he is part of her tribe. And if that's an energy that maybe isn't quite so romantic at this time, so be it. She knows her worth. Okay, remember the bottom of the deck here is patiently waiting, patiently in the energy that I know if things are going to manifest, it will manifest. And if it doesn't, it was not aligned. So she's in this energy of kind of reflecting. What does she want? What kind of role does she want masculine to play now? She knows she wants to operate from the heart space, but it may just be that he's part of his community at this time. And she's because she's not going to force feed the cup. She's not going to force feed the union cup. What about divine masculine? Divine masculine's crowning energy towards divine feminine at this time. I think it's very interesting. Distorted masculine. Clarified by the two of cups clarified by the false person. He is very distorted at this time. He, You'll see as we go through his reading today that he is very much in the energy of thinking about the past, having sadness about the past, being very distorted in how he has deceived himself, how he wore a mask in the past with his divine feminine. You know, the distorted masculine energy is someone who just loves bureaucracy, Loves power for the sake of power, ego energy, right? Is really all about, you know, want, wanting to operate from a logic and just rational approach, okay? Someone who is unwilling to trust, someone who ignores emotions and intuition and wants proof of everything, insists that everything is logical or rational. That is really discrediting the feminine side of your own being. And when he ignores his feminine side, when he doesn't balance that out, then he then disrespects his feminine. Remember, bottom of the deck is self-respect. So he's starting to get into this energy when he's crowning this reading with this energy is that he's seeing how distorted he was in this union, how he wore a mask in this union. And so now what does masculine, what's his second crowning energy for divine feminine now? Now it's time to break free. It's time to break free. Break free. Chase a dream. Look at this. There's this person who is stuck in this energy, stuck in this energy, stuck in the snow globe. And now they've broken out of the glass, finally breaking free, 
finally releasing his spirit, finally releasing himself from his confinement. He's transformed. He's transformed. So this is an energy where he, he's just claustrophobic from this need of excessive control all the time. It was choking his spirit, clarified by the seven of wands here. So now that he's broken free, he's like, uh-uh, I'm going to protect my peace. It's also an energy where I feel like he's got a little bit of a wall up because now he's free, he's vulnerable, right? You think about someone who's been in the protection, alleged protection of this, of this um, snow globe, of this glass, and now they're broken free and everything is exposed. So I do feel like there's an energy of like, ah, oh, I'm, I'm like guarding myself a little bit because I'm vulnerable, I'm fragile, I don't have any armor on. But look at this, high honor. This is the energy of him breaking free, protecting himself, but standing in his honor, in his integrity, in his highest honor. I love that. So now we're going to go ahead and take a look at head, heart, and environment, okay? What is the theme here for the reading for Divine Masculine and Feminine's collective head, heart, and environment? So Divine Feminine is in this energy of of uh this is masculine this is not feminine sorry I have them stacked okay release this is the death card she is releasing the storm she is releasing the pain she is releasing anything that's come in and crumbled her foundation and just kind of left her barren she's releasing any any energy that has um really, really affected her in a, in a very difficult way. She's just done with that energy, okay? So when the release card comes out in this deck, it's also a number 10 card, right? This is about cycles closing. We're releasing the, the pain of the end of this cycle. You know, it's an energy where the storm has come in, leveled out the playing field. And so now when she needs to release the pain from the leveling out, of the playing field, okay? Because now it's, it's time to rebuild. What about Divine Masculine? Ace of Wands, Passion Ignited, Storm Warning. This energy is, look at, he's at the one. So he's had this leveling out. He's cleared out, broken free, and now Passion has ignited within Divine Masculine for his Divine Feminine. It's almost like he kind of needed like this whole painful exercise, not an exercise, but you know, part of the journey, which has been very difficult for both masculine and feminine, but he needed that to come into the ace. Specifically for divine feminine, her energy towards divine masculine, head, heart, and environment, page of wands and king of cups, clarified by the man as this oracle. I really feel like there's this energy where there is communication and he's really coming from a place of his emotional mastery and his heart. I do feel like masculine is really showing now in the physical through communication that he is in his heart space for divine feminine. Granted, it may not be a whole lot of communication, but whatever communication is coming from coming through from masculine, I do feel like it is in a place of the heart. Divine Masculine's head, heart, and environment towards Divine Feminine, Page of Pentacles, Lovers, and the Man. This is the energy of thinking about how to make an offer in the 3D towards her as his divine partner. This is what he's thinking of. How to make an offer. How to create. What to do. What, what coin to give. Okay? Towards his divine connection. Towards his divine feminine to his divine feminine. So let's go ahead and get started. Headspace, when divine feminine thinks of divine masculine, what is she thinking? Look at this third eye chakra. We already have this high priestess card in her overall energy. So this is the energy of she's really going into her intuition around any action. This is Archangel Shamuel. This is about the solar plexus. I feel like any action that she is taking is in the intuitive, in the 5D, in the space of magnetically attracting. I don't feel like she is in the energy of, of like physically um, making any moves. I do feel like whatever is happening in her headspace is attracting action, attracting 
you know, that's not to say that, you know, hey, if you text or call him that, that it's a bad thing. And hey, I'm not telling anybody to do that. If he hasn't reached out, I don't know that I would be, you know, reaching out. But, you know, this is your own journey to execute, not me to tell you what to do. But I do feel like there is an energy that, you know, even if she is communicating with them first, I do feel like she is in alignment with whatever action that she's taking. But in her headspace, these are the intuitive hits, the intuitive downloads that she's getting about how she is to take action. First card out, Ten of Wands. Burdens. What's the burden? Nine of Cups, her wishes. What about the wishes? This luck, good fortune. I do feel like her burden is Man, are we going to be able to manifest this wish? Towers come in, right? There has been a crumbling. It is time for a new beginning. And we both need to work hard in order to rebuild this union. Six of Cups. She wants this union. She wants to reunite. It's an energy of soul connections. It's also an energy of nostalgia. But here, this is really about reunion energy because she wants the Ten of Pentacles. She wants this long term relationship she wants to build a legacy but it's giving her a lot of stress it's giving her a lot of stress so she's holding her faith here a fin card she's you know tapping in to the energy of spirit through her intuition to bring this connection back to life this is what she's evaluating she's evaluating in her headspace using her intuition because otherwise it's just harsh it's just stressful it creates too much tension it's too much burden if she taps into any other area at this time. So her intuition is where it is at for her. Her intuition is where it's at. Okay. What about divine masculine? What is he thinking when he's thinking of feminine? Look at this. Lovers again. That's at the bottom of the deck. And now it's here with woman holding a heart. He is really in his heart space for his divine feminine. When he looks at her, when he thinks of her, when he connects with her, he sees how compassionate, loving, and kind his divine feminine is. That's what he's thinking when he thinks of his feminine. So let's drill down deeper. What about all of that? What about it? So he wants harmony. He wants this divine partnership with his queen, queen of cups. First card out, Ten of Swords. Painful ending. See, her first card out is Ten of Wands. Ten of Swords. What's the ending? Three of Cups. I do feel like this is the end of, you know, any maybe third party energy that may have been there. That there Because there is no third party. And for those of you who like to message me and say, well, you know, I have a third party, etc. Maybe this is not your story at this time. So maybe you need to go back to my prior videos and look at that when there was. But the third parties have cycled out here, okay? So this is the end of third parties. I also feel like this is the end of, of things being casual. I do feel like this is the end of friend zoning because last week we got friend zone. And this week today, I got, I want to be with my feminine. So I do feel like it's the end of any kind of casual connection. Why? Because he's fallen in love with her. When she is in her heart space, he falls in love with her. And right now he is waiting to manifest. He's waiting to integrate some of this energy of this high honor. Okay, and so he's just not moving towards her right now because right now there are still some, you know, some some detours that he's making to bring in this successful energy so that he can stabilize. Four of Wands. There's an energy of union. Remember, he just got this here. There's an energy of stabilization, but right now he's feeling a lot of defeat. He's feeling a lot of defeat. Remember, this Four of Wands is clarified by the Nine of Swords. He's feeling conflicted. And so he's really trying to take a leap of faith and move out of this energy. And he wants to manifest with Divine Feminine. He wants to manifest more communication and safety with her. I do feel like there is an energy when she's in her heart, he starts to feel very safe. Remember, there's this thing that I put in my Instagram one time that I created. The flower does not chase the bee. The bee lands on the flower. Why? Because the flower creates a very delicate beautiful, safe place. She's luminous. Heart space for divine feminine when she feels for her masculine. She's just observing him. Observe. This is the hanged man's energy, which we already have here in her overall energy. She is observing. She's observing her masculine. She's observing his stability. She's observing his dependability. 
okay? So in her heart, she's observing. She's observing right now. Again, there's a lot of not real, huge material action because she knows they're in this phase. Remember the bottom of the deck where like, she's like, I know if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. I'm going to release micromanaging this in for this stuff. I'm going to release over exerting. I'm going to release force feeding. So she's observing. She's connecting to her intuition. She's trying to stay in balance to a pentacle. She's balancing what she creates and what she's creating is lifting out of any sort of negativity. Just keeping things light. I feel like she's keeping things, things light. Temperance, it's bringing balance. It's bringing balance over these burdens that she has over masculine king of cups moving towards her. So keeping it light, staying in observation and really connecting to intuition and not your ego mind is really healing those burdens. Judgment card, she's evaluating this hope, this renewal. There's healing healing of the mask she's healing this energy that she had of his deception of any ulterior motives anything he may be projecting or pretending there's an evaluation this judgment of him is being healed in her observation of him magician again she wants to manifest out of this separation and she wants to move towards this balanced energy, tame and wild, right? Sexual energy. I do feel like there is a huge desire there, but she's really listening to her intuition. She's very much staying in balance. She's staying level-headed. She's not getting overly excited and she's not getting overly um, pessimistic. Heart space for masculine. Look at this. Magician, Anxiety. What do we have? We have the nine of swords for him and his overall energy. He wants to create. He is aware. He is aware in his heart about his divine feminine being his partner. And it is giving him some anxiety about how to move forward into this union. So what else is he feeling for his divine feminine when he feels for her? We know what he's thinking. What is he feeling? <clears throat> First card out, seven of wands. We just got that here. He's broken free. He's feeling a little naked, but he's in his highest honor. So he's just, again, seven of wands. He's like, oh, I got to protect my heart a little bit. I got to protect my vulnerability. So there's a stalemate because boy, have I been through the tornado? Have I been through a painful end? Have I been torn up? The devil's energy. There's this obsessive thought around his stress, but he's coming out of it. He's coming out of it and he's almost getting ready. To date, he wants to meet. He wants to see you. He wants to meet in public. And there's been this conflict in his heart that he's walking away from. And again, temperance card, he's healing. Because he's had clarity that his star, his destiny, is his divine feminine, is his empress. Environment for divine feminine. What's happening in her environment as related to divine masculine? Look at this. Can't make it up. Awaiting results. Happy family. This is that four of wands, ten of cups. She's awaiting the results. She knows things are rooting. She knows that they're building a solid foundation and she's waiting for things to crop up for this happy family to manifest. So what's happening in her environment as related to that and masculine? Okay, first card out. Here's that ace of wands. New beginning. She's ready to move forward, knight to swords, and be a devoted companion, loyal, loyal companion to her masculine. World card, she's ready to successfully integrate all the lessons from this journey and complete this and continue to communicate and create because that is her mark. That is her aim. That is her target. But there is stress. But guess what? She's had victory over her success. And she has victory because there is communication. And here we have again. Now we can move forward. We're moving forward. We are communicating. But there is some delay in getting things going again. Okay. But this stress is really being combated. It is really being healed. Because again, she's using her intuition and staying in her heart and just observing. What about divine masculine Look at this. You can't make this up. We already have distorted masculine, two of cups, false person, and here we have it in his environment. 
spiritual union deceit. He knows that he has sabotaged his connection in the past. He is really dealing with his self-sabotage, his mask that he wore. So what's happening in his environment as related to Divine Feminine? <clears throat> Look at this, Six of Cups. This is this desire for reunion. But Six of Cups, when it's clarified by the Five of Cups, this is about past. And this is about sadness and regret over the past. And now wanting to move forward with his Divine Feminine. Six of Wands, there's an energy of victory over this healing. He's having victory. This is about reconciliation. He knows that this connection is his destiny. Seven of Swords, there's an energy of self-sabotage over his greatest happiness because he was very focused on money, but now he's been victorious. So now he's wanting to change. He's gathering the strength and the courage to persevere towards his boss, CEO, strong leader of a feminine, because she is strong. All right, let's see what's going on with the connection now. So this is the area where I look at uh, what divine masculine thinks of the connection, what divine feminine thinks of the connection, and what spirit is saying about the connection. All right, let's get started. Bottom of the deck energy. First, let me move all this stuff. Sorry. Okay. Bottom of the deck energy for this part of the reading. Look at this. Dream state. Dream state. This is my Divine Connections Oracle deck. This is the only deck that's out there on, in the market that is all about 3D and 5D energy. So you can see how much of your connection is in the 3D, how much is in the 5D, and how much... Um, you know, and, and what's happening in any part of your connection. So you'll know how much is happening in this earth and how much is in the astral plane. So we're dreaming, we're daydreaming, we're thinking a lot about each other. There's absolutely this energy of connecting in the dream state. Feminine saying nine of pentacles, this is where we're gaining our confidence. This is where we're getting our stability. Same with masculine. He's saying he's getting his strength by connecting with you. And spirit is saying, we're dreaming about the 10 of cups. We want the 10 of cups. We're ready for the Ten of Cups. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on in the connection from the from a high level, okay? And then we'll drill down into the energies. First card out, love. Cupid. There is love. Love has stirred. Love has been re reignited in this connection. What does the feminine say? Two of pentacles. She's trying to balance this love. She's really trying to balance this connection. Masculine said eight of wands. I want to move towards you. I want to communicate my love towards you. Spirit is saying you are both in alignment. The star card. This is a destined aligned connection that your love is finally in, al in alignment Peace. This is a 3D card. There is peace in this connection now. Feminine saying, yes, there is peace. We're slowly moving towards each other from a place of peace. Masculine is saying, I feel very stable and dependable right now. And he's getting, getting his power back because of this connection or reconnection with feminine, where he's coming through the end of all of these tens. Okay, he's got to break out of the sadness victimization energy, but co connecting with her, he's connecting to his strength again. Spirit is saying, yep, look at this message of love, page of cups. Communication in this connection right now is giving both of them so much peace, so much harmony, and it is stirring so much love. Remove negative energies, Coast Guard. This is a 3D card. These are all 3D, all 3D. This is all happening. So remove negative energies, um, divine feminine, say four swords. Yeah, we're healing from all the negative energies that have been swirling. Divine masculine saying, yes, we're, I'm trying to remove the negative energies and negative self-talk in my mind. Spirit is saying, we are removing anything that is keeping you from moving forward in this connection. Angel Metatron is here saying, there's going to be clarity. We're lighting up the path for you. Feminine is saying, yeah, the path is unknown at this time. 
and she's going to be okay with it. She's the goddess of the moon. Masculine is saying, yeah, I want the spiritual union. I understand the spiritual connection. I want something traditional. I want a marriage. I want a commitment. I know this is my person. And spirit is saying, we're giving you clarity over your fantasies, over these temptations, over any procrastination. So anywhere where you may have been chaotic, we're giving you clarity. There is going to be a breakthrough or there has been. Angel Raziel, magician. So now Angel Raziel is saying, we're helping you create. We're helping you create the road towards each other. Feminine is saying, you're helping us create self-mastery. Masculine is saying, you're helping us create movement towards each other to a place of peace. And spirit's actually saying, I'm not actually telling you anything. I'm not telling you anything. There's a strategy. You can't know too much. Goddess of the moon, this is the divine feminine. What is the divine feminine saying about herself? Intuitively, she knows that this ten of pentacles is coming. This, this legacy, this having everything in the material world, having this union with the masculine is coming. What does masculine say about the goddess of the moon? You're my queen of cups. You're the love of my life. You are compassionate. You are understanding. You are in your heart. Spirit is saying you are queen of wands. You are luminous. You are confident. You are magnetic. You have attracted all of this energy into your union. Now let's drill down. Five of wands and strength. We have conflict that we are overcoming. There has been conflict inside us, outside of us, that we have the strength now to overcome. The strength now to tame. What's the first card? Four of wands. Lots of four. A lot of union cards right now. Four of wands. Energy of union. Stability. What about it? Seven of cups. We're dreaming about it. We're also procrastinating, but guess what? This is where the tower shows up. No more procrastination. No more procrastination. It's time for action. Seven of Wands, this guarded energy around working together. You will work together at the perfect time. Hermit, there's an energy of being on our own solo journeys at this time. We are in the energy of not coming together for a casual connection at this time. This is what the feminine is saying. She's like, no. I'll rather go into hermit than go into something casual right now because I'm really trying to ground. I'm trying to evolve. I'm trying to continue to grow. So the tower comes in. The tower comes in, crumbles the old foundation, creates a breakthrough for movement forward in communication towards this connection. Six of swords. Now that we've had the breakthrough, now we're moving forward peacefully towards this union because our hearts are wide open. There is a rebirth of the union. And guess what? Now this Hierophant card, this connection, this marriage, this spiritual connection, High Priestess, we've both realized it. We both know intuitively through this Goddess of the Moon energy that this is a higher purpose connection. Higher purpose. So I wanted to add one other section to this reading, which is what does the masculine want to tell us about what he wants with the feminine? Bottom of the deck, and I used here my um, A Queen's Journey Oracle. I love these cards. I don't use them enough. I should use them so much more often than I do. Righteousness, Eight Swords. Righteousness is all about doing the right thing. It's about justice and balance, and he's really kind of stuck in his head trying to figure out how to correct himself, how to make his wrongs right right? This five of cups, six of cups energy, this I betrayed and withheld from you. I was distorted before. He wants you to know he's really thinking about how to bring justice, justice for union. We have it already at the bottom of the deck for the crowning energy. So this is another confirmation that this is what masculine wants. He wants to do right by you, wants to bring justice to all the wrongs that have happened in this connection for union. First card out, scepter. This is about power. What about it? Queen of Cups. He sees his Queen of Cups in his power. He sees that he sabotaged the connection through his deceit. He sees that this is why he's been left out in the cold. So he's gone through the dark night of the soul. Who? The King of Wands. He has. So he's waiting now to integrate the energy and communicate. His heart, his sacral chakra, his energy of vulnerability, 
this is also the energy of emotional vulnerability, sexuality. It has been cracked open. He is so vulnerable because he's so sad about the past and how she was his ten of cups. She was his emotional bliss. And now he wants to balance this out for this reconciliation. So he's healing royal chamber. He's healing in his home, in his chamber, loving himself. He's healing this addictive ego energy and he's really wanting to master himself. So this inaction of the throne, because you know when you're sitting on the throne, you're not taking action. This inaction of the throne has actually been victorious. It's been victorious. It's helped him think about what he wants to offer his feminine and really also give him the strength to nurture his wounds that he's incurred as part of this journey. So what does he want with feminine? Majestic magician. He wants to manifest this movement forward in passion and love towards this reunion. Six of Cups. Towards this reunion. But he wants to do it from a place of loyalty, stability, and with a pace that is not in and out. That he wants to come in and he wants to ground. So how is divine masculines and feminine soul evolving as part of this journey towards union with each other? Where did I put the bottom of the deck? Oh, right here. Okay. <laughs> bottom of the deck. Bottom of the deck. What do we have? We have sacred journey and empowerment. So this is the bottom of the deck, how their souls are, are evolving. They've both realized that this is a circuit, sacred journey and they're both feeling like they're starting to really come into their power. Look at this. This is that um, solar plexus energy again. They are empowered. They are kings and queens and emperors and empresses. They are ready to get on this journey from a place of empowerment. So what about Divine Feminine? How is her soul evolving for union with masculine? You can't make this up. Look at this. Self-worth. Self-worth. She knows who she is. She knows who she is now. She knows she's worthy and amazing and unique. She knows she is incredible. She's finally starting to see this. She knows she is enough. She is whole already. She's done her work. She knows. How is Ganesha helping her with the self-worth energy priorities? She is putting herself first, her journey first, her health first, her, her mental um, health and spiritual health, emotional health first. She's getting her priorities straight. She's getting her priorities straight. Ganesha is helping her. What is important in her life? She needs to make the most of her time. She can't try to force feed. She can't try to control. She can't try to micromanage this journey. No. Know your worth. What about divine masculine? How is his soul evolving for union with his divine feminine? Look at this. Shine. Guess what? Luminous? Shine. I'm telling you, he is but half a step behind on the journey. Half a step. He is so close to wholeness, oneness, union. We can't make it up. Look at, do you guys see the orb when I did that? Do you see the orb right on Ganesha? Whoa, that's a message. He is so close. Shine is all about shining the light that he has within himself. This is about he has traveled a long road of experiences. It has been, it has been a journey of uncertainty. And now he is inspired and motivated and ignited with this passion. And you can't make this up because the bottom of the deck for him, for his energy towards feminine was passion ignited. He is in this energy where he is feeling luminous. He's almost there. And guess what Ganesh is doing? He's helping him come in to the wholeness energy. This wholeness energy to acknowledge that he is whole, that he is in it. If he operates from his heart and gets out of this distorted masculine energy, he has freed himself from that energy. If he stays in his heart space, that is the love. That's the secret sauce. He's able to create a safe and supporting and loving environment for himself if he stays in his highest honor. 
that's where he will find peace. That's where this light shines brighter from the heart center. So he's healing. He's breathing. He's in his health. He's feeling relaxed so that he can shine his light brighter. Oh my God, you can't make this up. If you guys want to book your own personal session with me, your own healing session, coaching session, your own reading, go to queenalight1111.com. And again, I'm telling you, the negative energy mantra coupled with the twin flame healing meditation, secret sauce, it will help you. All right. I will be back again later this week. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.